going to show you the top four finger picking guitar patterns in the Travis picking style. Travis picking is a finger picking approach named after the guitarist Merle Travis. These four patterns are the most common and most basic finger picking guitar patterns to learn. You can play them as they are, or you can expand on them in the future to play some very advanced sounding finger style guitar and solo guitar arrangements, which is what players like Chet Atkins did. These finger picking patterns are used all over the place in any music that has somewhat of a finger picking guitar sound, folk guitar, country music, singer songwriter music, the Beatles use them, Simon and Garfunkel, Bob Dylan, and tons and tons of artists today are using some of these exact finger picking patterns to accompany themselves. The signature of this Travis picking sound is that one's thumb is constantly alternating bass notes, keeping a really, really consistent sound going in the bass roll, and then the fingers are filling out the chords with various patterns and notes on top of that, and then melody can even be played on top of those two things as well. When you put that all together, it creates creates this very appealing finger picking guitar sound because we're playing the role of at least two musicians, if not three, and we get this full, rich, self-contained kind of full music sound with just one instrument. I'm going to show you each of the four finger picking guitar patterns with different string groupings because different chords use different strings. I'm going to demonstrate each pattern through a common chord progression slowly and then fast, and then I'll also demonstrate each finger picking pattern with a section of a real song so we can hear how it sounds in real music. That's what we're gonna cover. Let's do it. I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com where I help guitarists gain more creative control over music so we can express ourselves more freely. If you're new here, welcome. Please follow and subscribe. I have new videos every week. Okay, so the first pattern is called the inside outside pattern. We're gonna use a G chord for this and every pattern is named based on what's happening above the bass because the bass in all four patterns is going to be the exact same. So this is the bass line if you're playing a G chord. It's the one, five, one, five of G. Okay, so that's just going this alternating bass. And then the inside outside means that you're going to play out of these two notes, the third string and the second string, the inside note, and then the outside note. It's just very simple alternating between those. So you have bass, inside, bass, outside, bass, inside, bass, outside. That's it. As simple as it is. Inside, outside pattern. This is on G. Quick side note here, don't ever put fingers down with the left hand that you don't actually need. We're not playing a G chord like this with this finger down and with this finger down. I'm just only playing, holding down at least, this third fret on the sixth string. And then with any sixth string rooted chord, you're skipping the A string and you're going to play the rest of the notes above the root on the fourth, third, and second string. So we're playing the root down here on the sixth string and then you're playing string three, thumb jumps up to string four, second, and then second string with your M finger, with your middle finger. Okay, this is the pattern, the inside outside pattern. Now, if you're going to play a fifth string rooted chord, let's go to a C chord here, then the pattern is just contained in all four middle strings. So this is the inside outside pattern on C or any chord that's rooted off the fifth string by default. These things can can make alterations on them, which we'll talk about another time. But that's the fifth string rooted chords. If it's a fourth string rooted chord, then you're just playing top four strings only. So this is a D chord, and you're playing the same pattern. Boom, 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 boom. One, five, one, five of D. And then you got thumb, inside, thumb, outside, thumb, inside, thumb, outside. Okay, so with all of these patterns, the string groupings are the same. Six string rooted chord, you're playing strings five, and then four, three, two. Fifth string rooted chord, you're playing the middle four strings. Fourth string rooted chord, you're playing the top of four strings. Again, as default, you can venture away from that later and add more complexity to the patterns, but this is the foundational version of these finger picking patterns. So here's a very common chord progression that I'm gonna play each pattern through. This is the chord progression of one of my favorite country songs of all time by Buck Owens called Love's Gonna Live Here. I'm gonna play half of it at half time speed so you can see the pattern really slowly and hear it functionally working nice and slow through a chord progression. Then I'm gonna double speed uh, for the second half so you can hear how it sounds when it's sped up. So here's the demonstration. One, two, three, four. So now I'm gonna 
sing the first verse of this song, Love's Gonna Live Here, just so you can hear how this super simple inside outside pattern, which at first might seem so basic, how are we gonna use it in real music? Well, it really works quite, quite well over real music. It also is the foundation to get more complex finger picking patterns down, but it's great on its own too. I'm gonna to speed it up quite a bit just so you can hear how it might sound if you work towards getting this faster and using it as your own accompaniment. Oh, the sun's gonna shine in my life once more. Love's gonna live here again. Things are gonna be the way they were. Love's gonna live here again. Time for pattern two. We're not gonna need to spend much time here because it is just the flip. It's called the outside inside. And you already know what it's gonna be. We're keeping the bass the same all the time. And you're gonna play thumb, outside thumb, inside thumb, outside thumb, inside. The groupings of the notes along with the chords stay the same. Everything's the same. You're just flipping outside and inside. So. So here's that same progression, nice and slow, and then doubling the speed halfway through. One, two, three, four. Now let's listen to it in the context of our song in real music. I'm gonna play it nice and fast again, and this is the chorus of Love's Gonna Live Here. The progression is the same throughout the whole song. This is the chorus. Love's gonna live here. Love's gonna live here. Love's gonna live here again. No more loneliness, only happiness. Love's gonna live here again. Okay, the next pattern is when it gets fancy. This is called the pinch pattern, and it is the most common finger picking pattern of all time and the most useful. If there's one you're ever gonna learn, it should be this one. It is just fantastic. Sounds good slow, sounds good fast. It is just a wonderful pattern. And the first two are a great foundation to then creating this pattern, especially the outside inside, because the pinch pattern is simply two outside inside patterns in a row except the first one we're going to do this motion that is called the pinch motion because you're playing thumb you're plucking with thumb and the m finger the middle finger at the same time towards each other in this pinching motion so that's called the pinch so we're pinching and because we played those two together we're letting it sustain or you can think of it as kind of resting for a note instead of going bass outside bass inside you're going together weight bass inside instead of okay so you got a little a uh, little uh, syncopation there which is what makes this is gonna sound like it kind of bounces and has more texture to it so okay and then the second time you're just playing a normal outside inside so you got pinch thumb inside okay so pinch weight thumb inside thumb outside thumb inside that is the pattern pinch weight thumb inside thumb outside thumb inside except and that's totally the pinch pattern. I like to take away the very last eighth note, the very last inside as well. So it gets even a little more of a bounce to it, okay? So I like to take that last note away, which will be this. And the reason taking that last note away is nice is that if you wanna to work towards playing really fast finger picking, it gives you a little space the syncopation sounds great too, but it gives you just a little space to switch chords and to just have it feel more relaxed with the right hand. So I typically play it that way. If we filled it in, it would sound like this. Just a little crammed to throw that in and then get back to the pinch. So I like to leave that out. So that's the pinch pattern. The grouping of the strings is the same. Here it sounds, here's what it sounds like on C. I'm swinging it a little bit too. You can play it nice and straight or swing. Da, 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 da nice and straight or swinging a little either one here it is on D okay now here it is through our progression nice and slow and then speeding it up double speed halfway through one two three four
right, let's plug it into our song. We're going to do the second verse of Love's Gonna Live here. Same tempo, same progression, just so we can hear that context of the pinch pattern as accompaniment in a real song. I hear bells a ringing, I hear birds a singing. Love's gonna live here again. I hear bees a humming, and I know that days are coming. Love's gonna live here again. You hear how the pinch pattern has that bounce to it. It's just so effective as an accompaniment pattern. It's just fantastic finger picking pattern to play with. That's the one I used in the intro of this video as well. Okay, the fourth pattern in our top four finger picking guitar patterns is called the descending arpeggio because it does exactly that. It arpeggiates the chord from the top downward. Uh, we're going to do a pinch and then play the middle note and then the thumb does its thing. It's never going to change. The thumb is always doing it. So now the top note of the thumb bass line is part of this arpeggio descending arpeggio structure. Okay. So I'll just let you look at it on the screen while I play it really, really slowly so you can mimic that if you need to. The descending arpeggio part is this so the thumb the bass is kind of taking part of this melt melodic sound if you want to listen to it that way okay that's what it is on g you can just apply that to the middle four strings or the top four strings okay here it is through our progression super slowly then speeding up halfway through like we've been doing one two three four As for plugging it into the song, well, this song is so beautiful and so simple. It just has those two verses and then it has the chorus. So we could sing the chorus again for this, but you heard the chorus before. Let's do a guitar solo over this descending arpeggio pattern so we can hear it in context of music. So I'll play through the progression exactly the same way with the descending arpeggio pattern and then play a guitar solo on top of it for our song. One, two, one, two, three, four. some really beautiful, really amazing chords to practice your finger picking guitar patterns with, then definitely download my chord chart called Chords with Color. It's unlike any other chord chart out there. It shows a bunch of chords through several keys and then tons of alternative options for each of those chords. So you can add color to them and extensions and just beautiful alterations that still work equally well in whatever setting your chord was in a song you're working on or performing. Uh, and it's just wonderful for listening to sounds, practicing technique, uh, studying the chord theory of something, and working on finger picking guitar patterns. So check that out, free download. You can go to chordswithcolor.com or just click the link in the top of the description. So which finger picking guitar pattern out of the four was your favorite and which one are you gonna commit to learning so you can use it in any and every song that you work on next? Was it the inside outside pattern, the outside inside pattern, the pinch pattern or the descending arpeggio pattern. Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. I post new lessons every week. Next week, I am going to share a solo guitar arrangement of Autumn Leaves, beautiful, simple, easy arrangement and share the sheet music for that as well. So hope to see you in that lesson. Take care. Thanks for watching and happy practicing.